Good morning. The Lord be with you. I was so worried y'all would forget to do that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all for coming. It has been almost a year since we've seen each other. And you, I cannot express how happy I am to see all of you. You would notice a few changes in the church with the little blue dots and everybody wearing masks and the electronics in the back and the electronics in the front now. This is all to try and help with this COVID issue going on. The bulletin will be displayed on the screen to the side. And Jackie has made a request that if you choose to sing with the, uh, the songs, the hymns coming up, since we do not have a full choir, do so softly or gently. Keep your mask in place. And with that, we do welcome you all. The Lenten devotionals were emailed to you last week. We hope you will have time to in study and prayer during this time in the life of the church that is so meaningful. The Lenten challenge, which is on the website, and we do encourage you to go there and check on it occasionally. Every day during, bless you, every day during Lent, the 40 plus Sundays, select an item of clothing or a household item you no longer use and place it in a bag to be donated to your favorite charity. Remember, if it's dirty or broken or you don't want it in your house, it's safe to conclude others don't either. Donate generously. And again, check the church website weekly for new posts and updated prayer list. First on Faith, our Wednesday program, uh, featuring testimonials from several other church members and their friends. Each of the stories has been very inspirational so far, and we did help record those, and all of them are very inspirational. And we do ask you to please honor your commitment to the church to support the work of God's church here in FPC. You may send your donations by electronic giving, by the electronic giving setting on the website, by direct deposit form from your bank, or by mailing it to the church office. And we are not going to be passing the offering plate today. They're situated in the back. When you came in, you probably saw them. If not, look for them on the way out. I mean, the work of the church does still go on, even though society has slowed down somewhat. There are still folks in need and missions that we're still supporting, so it is very important. And the flowers, the grace and the chancel this morning, are given in loving memory by uh, the church member Louise Postel Myers, who passed away last week. That was a very sad time. And she was a very big portion of this church, and we're all going to miss her greatly. Our opening prayer. During the season of Lent, we pray to you, O God of endless compassion and power. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, you reconciled your people to yourself. In the coming days, as we follow Christ's example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love, in all that we say and all that we do. Amen. Our call to worship. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let those who wait for you to be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Lord of all, you lead the humble in what is right, and teach the humble your ways. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep God's covenant and God's decree.
Remember that our Lord Jesus Christ sympathized with us in our weakness, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor with our corporate prayer, followed by a brief moment of silent prayer. God of mercy, you sent, sent Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ to seek the, and, save and save the lost. lost. We, we confess, confess that, that we, we have strayed, strayed from, from you and turned, and turned aside, aside from, from your way. way. We, we are, are misled by pride, for we, for we see ourselves, ourselves pure when we are stained, stained and great when we are small. small. We have, we have failed, failed in love, neglected, neglected justice, and, and ignored, ignored your, your truth. truth. Have, have mercy, O oh God, and forgive our sin. Return us to the path of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Abby, would you like to come up for a minute? Gonna do it? Time for, yeah. You gonna do it? No. <laughs> Abby, come on and see me. It's me. <laughs> I'm going to get you to sit on the steps right there, okay? I know it's terrible having to be. Can you turn around and look at me? That's perfect. Oh, don't go off backwards, okay? We're good. It's hard to tell who people are, isn't it? With the mask on, do you have a hard time, Abby? Do you have a hard time knowing who it is? Yeah, I do. I was watching people as they came in this morning, and it was hard for me to tell. I had to really look and really see who that person was, and I kept looking for you, and you didn't come, and you didn't come, and finally there you were, and I was so glad to see you. Do you know that that's the way God feels too? God is so glad to see us this morning. And there's nothing that we can do, absolutely nothing, that we can do to hide from God. If we do something bad and we try to hide from God, He knows where we are, He knows what we look like. He can tell who we are whether we have on a mask or whether we don't. So I want you to remember that that during this time when it seems really weird that all these people are going around with different masks, that God loves you for what's inside, for what's underneath that mask, and what's inside and what's in your heart. Can you remember that? Yeah? And one of these days we'll be back to where I can give you a big hug, okay? Okay, can we pray together? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Thank you for bringing us back together. And please help us learn to recognize each other by the things that are on the inside and not the way we look on the outside. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, sweetie. I'll see you next time. Our prayer for illumination. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 
open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from the book of Mark, chapters 1, verses 9 through 15, a story most of you are very familiar with. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Before I start reading the second scripture, I'm going to take just a couple of minutes of personal privilege, personal gratitude that I have for John Toth and for Jim Rollins for filling in for me while I was off um, having a new hip put in. And I do appreciate all of the uh, cards and emails and food and so forth that y'all have showered us with, uh, not only this time, but the first time when I first fell. Um, I just want to tell you how much that meant and how much that did mean to our family. And um, the other thank you that I want to share is with the elders of this church, the session, all of those currently serving plus those who rotated off at the end of 2020, Mark Burson, John Drain, and Mary Elizabeth Pryor, served loyally and faithfully, and I'm so appreciative of their commitment and dedication, not only to this church, but to the Lord. So I wanted to, um, to get those thank yous in. Um, and so now let's turn to our second scripture this morning. It comes from the book of Genesis. I'm going to start with verse 8. I know it says 9. No, it does say 8. Okay. Um, Verses 8 through 17. Listen now for God's word. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think it's 
situated. Let us pray. And now, O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Why do people of all ages generally have a love affair with rainbows? What is it about seeing that arc of variegated colors in the sky that causes us to crane our necks to make sure we see all of it? We point and we grab people and we say, can you see it? Can you see it? Look quickly. There's the rainbow. And other people can detect that sense of excitement in our voices. And rainbows also provide one of those rare opportunities to explain a theological truth. You didn't know that, did you? That rainbows could be theological. They are. But they're, it's meant, I think, so that every age can understand God's love and God's everlasting promise to all of the people on earth. In 1979, Jim Henson, the masterful creator of The Muppets, sat quietly on a movie set and began to softly sing the words to one of the songs.
the Muppets, Jim Henson, Sesame Street, they did not set out to be a religious influence. And yet, because of the focus on living with neighbor and love and respect, the ideas espoused by their body of work is nonetheless reflective of a deep love of something larger and greater than ourselves. And that deep devotion comes pouring out of this song when Kermit sang, it's something that I'm supposed to do. This is something that I'm supposed to be. Paul Williams, one of the songwriters of Rainbow Connection, explained how the setting for Kermit the Frog's solo in the Muppet movie was incorporated into the film because they had not planned it that way. Jim Henson just felt it in his heart to start singing it in Kermit's voice. And Paul Williams said, it just seemed like it would be a place where he would see a rainbow there in the forest, in the swamp, in the trees, in the light coming through the trees. But William said, we also wanted to show that he, that is Kermit, would be on a spiritual path, examining life and the meaning of life. During Lent, we are called to examine our own spiritual path. And you may say to yourself that you didn't even know that you had a spiritual path. Or you may have given up on your spiritual path for other pursuits. You may feel lonely trying to walk your spiritual path. You may feel, feel overwhelmed by what appears to be too much baggage you're carrying, too many negative experiences to overcome. But let me be very clear. And if you remember nothing else that I say this morning, remember this. God is love. And God loves you and me. And very simply, that's the rainbow connection. And while the rainbow is not a sacrament, there are only two sacraments that we recognize, baptism and the Lord's Supper, because those were specifically set out for us by Jesus himself. But the rainbow does represent God's love and faithfulness very early in the biblical accounts. The rainbow is one of those things that appear when we least expect it. There we are driving through a torrential rain shower. Can't see our hand in front of our face. There we are slogging our way through the storms of life. There we are, angry at the perceived insufficiencies we've suffered. There we are, weeping, crying out for what we may have lost or what we never had. And then before we can blink an eye, we spy it as it comes from behind a cloud or peeps out of a camouflaged position high in the sky, and we smile in spite of ourselves at God's splendor, at God's reminder of the covenant, that blaze of color that the rainbow paced across the heavens. The rainbow is sacramental in its meaning for us as Christians. I mean, how profound, how profound that God felt remorse at the loss of so much of creation in those 40 days of flood. We overlook this aspect of the narrative. But even at this early time, God is grieving and mourning for his beloved creation. And even now, God is trying to find every way possible to bring human beings back into a covenant relationship with himself. Now, the rainbow is not a sign of repentance because God is perfect 
in every way, in every fiber of God's being. He doesn't need to repent because he has done nothing wrong. But he can feel remorse at what the human condition brings to the world. And the rainbow is a gift from God that can be a powerful reminder of our need for repentance and our need for restoration and wholeness in that covenantal relationship with God. A covenant. It's a special relationship when described in the Bible. And God said it over and over and over again to Noah. He made a covenant. He had already made a covenant between himself and Adam and Eve, which they broke. God made a covenant between himself and Abraham and later with Isaac and Jacob, which each of them broke in some way. God made a covenant with the people of Israel as Moses brought the Ten Commandments for living as children of the Lord, which they repeatedly broke. And in the days of the prophets, God made covenant after covenant. In Isaiah 43, we hear Isaiah saying, But thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Broken. A covenant broken by the people. The prophet Jeremiah said, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Covenant. Connection. Broken by the people. Ezekiel. I will make a covenant of peace with them, He says, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will bless them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary among them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Broken by us. Hosea, in the second chapter, I will make for you a covenant on that day with the wild animals, the birds of the air, and the creeping things of the ground, and I will abolish the bow, the sword, and the war from the land, and I will make you lie down in safety. Covenant. Broken by people. Broken. Broken, broken, broken. Do you want to know what the rainbow connection is? Well, here it is. Time after time, God's mercy and forgiveness is given to God's people. That free gift of covenant, of grace. And time after time, people break the covenant. Time after time, God remains faithful to the covenant faithful to his word because God's word is entirely trustworthy for at no time 
has God broken his vow to humankind? If anything, God increased his pledge. In Jesus Christ, every vow was kept to the fullest. In Jesus Christ, every promise was righteous. In Jesus Christ, every covenant was fulfilled. You are my son, the beloved. And the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Those are words for us to hear. The covenant for us to hear. The kingdom of God has come near. And we are connected with it. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? It is in the profound promise the appearance of the rainbow evokes. We want more than this broken earthly life has to offer. We want more. The earth and its people are precious to be sure, but we believe there is something on the other side. We believe there is something at the end of the rainbow, something that is more precious than a pot of gold, something that is stronger than the most powerful of earthly temptations. We believe in connection, relationship, forgiveness, and grace. We believe in the lovers. In the sheer colors, we can detect the fact that for those who love the Lord with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their might, there is a place waiting at the end of the rainbow, a dwelling place for us in the glory of the kingdom of God. In the sunny stripes, we can imagine God smiling down at all creation with irresistible grace written across the sky. For all to see is that God loves us so much that nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us through Christ Jesus our Lord. We believe in the dreamers. We believe that for those who dream of a better world, a better place here on earth, and who act on that dream with respect and dignity. There is reward of conscience here and everlasting praise among the saints. For those who refuse to quit on themselves, on others, and on creation itself, the connection is written on their hearts. We believe in you and me, here together, finally, but here together as children of God, the Father Almighty, we believe that for you and for me, we can find the treasures at the end of the rainbow that point to the cross. We believe that living in peace and love with our fellow human beings can be found in shared honor and steadfast devotion. There is the sound of God calling our names loud and clear. For the storms and the problems of this life have been quieted and replaced by the glory of God's kingdom that has come near. The rainbow connection. God's love for you and for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith, which is an excerpt from a brief statement of faith. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good. 
and makes makes everyone everyone equally equally in God's God's image, image, male male and female, female, of every every race race and people, people, to live as as one community. community. But But we we rebel rebel against against God. God. We We hide hide from from our Creator. Creator. Ignoring Ignoring God's God's commandments, commandments, we we violate violate the the image of God God in in others and and ourselves. We accept lies as truth, exploit exploit neighbor and and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We We deserve God's condemnation, condemnation, yet God God acts with justice and mercy to redeem redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please join me now in a prayer, a litany for Lent. Let us pray. O Christ, out of your fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. You are our eternal hope. You are patient and full of mercy. You are generous to all who call upon you. O Christ, fountain of life and holiness, you have taken away our sins. On the cross you were wounded for our transgressions and were bruised for our iniquities. O Christ, obedient unto death, source of all comfort, our life and our resurrection, our peace and reconciliation. O Christ, Savior of all who trust you, hope of all who die for you, and joy of all the saints. Jesus, hear now our intercessions for your people and for your world, for your church around the world, for all who carry out ministries in your church. For people who have accepted spiritual disciplines. For Christians in every land. For Jews and Muslims and people of other faiths. For those who cannot believe. for governors and rulers in every land, for people who suffer in sorrow. Holy God, your word, Jesus Christ, spoke peace to a sinful world and brought humanity the gift of reconciliation by the suffering and death he endured. Teach those who bear his name to follow the example he gave us. May our faith, hope, and charity turn hatred to love, conflict to peace, and death to eternal life. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray with bold confidence together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
At this point, I'm going to postpone the benediction, and I ask everyone to stay in their seats, and we will call our, congreg- our annual congregational meeting to order and our meeting of the corporation. Um, I will ask Roger Hewson if he would come up and take the minutes as our clerk of session. And I'll ask Steve Cahoon to come up. There's some paper under here. They're little scraps, but you can probably use them. Wait a minute, Roger, I got you. Here. one of the aggravating things that those of us who wear glasses have to put up with. (laughs) Okay. I declare that we have a quorum and that we have uh, called the meeting of the Congregation of First Presbyterian Church uh, to order for the annual meeting. This is um, a meeting where anyone may... um, participate. We don't have a set agenda other than a couple of items that we know that we're going to take care of, but uh, you have the privilege during this meeting to bring up anything that you would like um, or any questions you have or any observations. So um, first of all, I would ask that we elect a president. Am I in the right place? No, this is the congregation. Okay. This is... We don't have a president of the congregation. We have a president of the corporation. Okay. Um, for this congregational meeting, uh, the only item of business is to, that I know of is to approve the terms of call for the pastor. And uh, so I'm going to excuse myself for whatever it takes. I'm just, I can get to my walker and I'll be good. Thank you. You don't put that part in the minutes. (laughs) Don't put that part in the minutes that she hobbled off (laughs) and that she dropped her microphone pack. 
The uh, only other item that we typically 